So in the last video we were discussing the factors affecting viscosity. Today we will be studying the rheological classification. So what is rheology or rheological classification? Rheology Rheology is the study of flow of matter. Rheology is the study of flow of matter. Now first we will discuss Newtonian fluids. First we will discuss So in the last class we derived tau equals to mu times du dy and this is known as the Newton's law of viscosity. Now fluids which follow this behavior, fluids which follow this behavior are known as Newtonian fluids. Now examples of Newtonian fluids are examples of Newtonian fluids so the first example is kerosene then we have water then petrol ethanol benzene glycerin mercury so these are all examples these are all examples for newtonian fluids newtonian fluids because they all obey the newton's law of viscosity that is tau equals to mu du dy now instead of all these we have one more thing that is all gases so all gases are newtonian fluids now let's try to do a plot on this so i've taken a graph over here on the y axis we plot on the y axis we plot the tau and on the x axis we have du dy which is the velocity gradient for newtonian fluids we know that it follows newton's law of viscosity which is tau equals to mu times du dy hence if we plot this tau versus du dy we get a straight line which passes through the origin so we obtain this yellow line for newtonian fluids let me write this so this is for newtonian fluids now let's try to study non newtonian fluids so next we have the new non newtonian fluids so for non newtonian fluids the shear stress is not linearly dependent on the velocity gradient so for non newtonian fluids the equation will be tau equals to some constant a times du dy which is the velocity gradient whole to the power n plus some initial stress which is tau y so this is the equation that non newtonian fluids follow so non newtonian fluids can be further classified on the basis of this equation first we have the non newtonian pseudo plastic fluid so for non newtonian pseudo plastic fluid the value of n in this equation in this equation the value of n will be less than 1 will be less than 1 and tau y is equal to 0 so these are the conditions for which we call the fluid non newtonian pseudo plastic fluid and if we plot this so for non newtonian pseudo plastic fluid the graph will be somewhat like this it will look somewhat like this because the equation which it follows is du dy whole to the power n plus tau y now this is zero for pseudo plastic and n is less than 1 n is less than 1 for pseudo plastic fluid and hence if we plot this we get a plot like this let me name this so this is the pseudo plastic curve on the rheological diagram now let's study dilatant fluids so i forgot to mention the examples of pseudo plastic fluids examples of pseudo plastic fluids include gelatin this is gelatin milk this is milk and lastly blood so these are the examples of pseudo plastic fluids so after pseudo plastic fluids we have the non newtonian dilatant fluid so for non newtonian dilatant fluids the for the expression tau equals to a du dy whole to the power n plus tau y here we will have tau y equals to 0 and n for dilatant fluids n will be greater than 1 n will be greater than 1 for di dilatant fluids so now let's plot this so if we plot the dilatant fluid in this curve we will get something like this this is the nature of the dilatant curve this is the dilatant curve Now let's study some other fluids which are thi thioxotropic fluid and bingham plastic. Now thioxotropic fluid, if we plot, it looks something like this. So thioxotropic fluids look somewhat like this. The curve for thioxotropic fluid because the equation for thioxotropic fluid tau equals to a times du dy whole to the power n plus tau y. Now this gap is tau y. 
this is the initial stress this is tau y and n for thioxotropic fluid n is less than 1 n is less than 1 for thioxotropic fluid now we have last which is the bingham plastic so this is the plot for bingham plastic this straight line which you see with having a initial stress of tau y is the bingham plastic so now let's discuss the examples for thioxotropic fluid bingham plastic and dilatant fluids these three examples were left so these are the examples for dilatant fluid first we have the sugar solution then we have the starch solution and at last we have high concentration sand suspension this is high concentration sand suspensions next we will study the examples examples for thioxotropic fluids so examples of thioxotropic fluid is printer ink is the printer ink and lipsticks lipsticks are also examples of thioxotropic fluids next comes bingham plastic so the best example of bingham plastic is toothpaste toothpaste is a good example for bingham plastic so these were the examples of various types of fluids these were the various types of fluids now this is the rheological diagram so two important things which i did not mention in this curve is the position of ideal fluids position of ideal fluid and solids so let's try to place this in this diagram for ideal fluids so fluids which have zero viscosity and are incompressible are known as ideal fluids now because they have zero viscosity hence if we try to put this in equation tau equals to mu du dy then because of the fact that mu equals to zero tau will always be zero hence if we try to draw this in the rheological curve what we get is so this is the location of ideal fluids the x axis is the ideal fluid and for solids no matter how shear stress you apply if you even if you apply infinite shear stress in a solid you will find no velocity gradient and hence for solids the curve will be on the y axis this will be the position of the solids in the rheological curve so this was all about rheological curve now let's end this by talking a little bit about incompressible and compressible fluids so let's discuss some points with incompressible and compressible fluids incompressible and compressible fluids so first point so if density does not change or change in density is negligibly small with pressure the fluid is said to be incompressible so imagine you have this football and no matter what pressure you apply no matter what pressure you apply from around the volume of this football remains same so if the volume of this football does not change that means the density which is mass by volume this density will also not change and hence what we say is this ball is incompressible the same is what i am trying to explain over here if density does not change or change in density is negligible with small pressures the fluid is said to be incompressible so now let's move on to the next point so if density changes with pressure the fluid is said to be compressible here in the example we just discussed above suppose i am applying pressure to this ball and the and the volume of this ball shrinks if the volume changes that means the density which is equal to mass by volume will change and hence the density is affected by pressure and this is what it says if density changes with pressure the fluid is said to be compressible so the third point is almost all liquids are incompressible and gases are compressible now let's talk about the compressibility so compressibility it is the measure of change of density or volume when a substance is subjected to pressure so coefficient of compressibility coefficient of compressibility is denoted by beta this is denoted by beta it is equal to minus dv by v divided by dp this is how beta is defined it can be also written as d of d of rho by rho divided by dp where rho equals to rho equals to density so this was coefficient of compressibility that is beta now comes bulk modulus 
So bulk modulus of elasticity is denoted by K and it is the reciprocal, it is the reciprocal of compressibility. It is the reciprocal of compressibility that is 1 by beta. Hence I can write bulk modulus equals to if I reverse this what I get is dp over dp over dv by v with a negative sign. This negative sign implies that the volume is shrinked on application of the external pressure. So this is bulk modulus. Now we have certain other information that is for perfect gas. So for an ideal gas the value of K that is the bulk modulus equal to the absolute pressure for isothermal process for isothermal process and the value of K for isentropic process isentropic process is equal to gamma times the absolute pressure now gamma equals to Cp by Cv which is equal to the ratio of specific heat at constant pressure at constant pressure divided by the specific heat at constant volume So this was all about compressibility and bulk modulus. Thank you.